There we go. Um, now I'm recording. But, Hello. Uh, there she is. So um, I'm really excited for you guys to meet her because um, she was exactly where you guys were at one point in time, and she's really making a name for herself. She's done a whole bunch of things, and I want to hear about them. I want to talk about them. I want to fangirl over her, and, um, you know, I want to go from there. And then I want you guys to ask her anything and put her on the spot. Okay. So everybody, my name is Dante Ramos. And like Professor Gilly said, I was in your shoes. And the reason I would say, I don't know if all of you guys are within the age bracket, but I was a late bloomer. So I actually graduated college at 24 years old, right shy before my 25th birthday. So I was super late. I was up Professor Gilly's butt asking her for every single event, every oh single day one of the semester. I was using a different email address at the time and it had my work phone number at the bottom. She called <laughs> me at work. It was like the first day of the semester. She's like, I want to go film this, this, this. I was like, okay. And I remember you called me like, how did she get my number? <laughs> like you were so like, what? But well, I now just... everyone's got my cell phone. But at the time I was like, wait, what? And yeah. <laughs> Totally. So I was on top of it. Um, I had went to Kane. So originally I started at Penn State. And when I decided to leave Penn State, it was for a lot of different reasons. I had dealt with some racial situations. I was really, really far from home. I was eight hours away. So I, I was going through some transitions that I wasn't comfortable with. And so I decided to come back home. I had went to Raritan Valley for a year. Actually, two years I graduated from there. And then I went to Kane. And when I went to Kane, I had a plan that this was gonna be my stepping stone for me to get um, my career going. So I knew that this is, I had to go all in. So again, when I started Kane TV, um, I was on Professor Gilly for every single event because for me, for anybody who wants to be a TV host or a reporter, you do need a reel. So what I will say is that if you can take advantage of the creative outlets that you have, all these opportunities that you have on campus, it be Kane TV, um, when you work with Professor Oaks and you're editing a video, I actually use my editing for, um, I forget, the football player. I'm sure if you guys have Professor Oaks, you know which one I'm talking about, his project he does every semester. And I use that as one of my, um, editing situ like editing reels to give to people as if like when I need a job and I got a lot of responses so save the work especially if you're getting A's on it save that work because believe me our professors at Kane they have worked in that industry they know what people are looking for so Professor Gilly she had helped me with my um with when we do I don't know if you did that already yet Professor Gilly when they did the news reading like the news report Oh, that's Falkowski. Oh, I don't know why, for, but you did it in the Kane TV. Okay, yeah. well, Falkowski, that's a good class as well, if you ever have Falkowski. Um, when we did news reporting and you do your diction, I use that as one of, a part of my reel. And that actually helped me get my CBS This Morning internship where I was under Gail King and Nora O'Donnell. So what I will say is that I know some people try to sleep on our school, but I love Kane. I love what it's offered. I love what I have made from it. And I really do think that it comes down to you using your sources and using um, what these professors are giving you, giving you. Because honestly, Oaks, Falkowski, and Gilly, all of them poured into me in different ways to get me to where I am today. So I will say, um, use your classes, save the work that you have, and put it towards your reel. Because I use my reel. All of my work was based off of Oaks. Falkowski when we did the newsroom and then Professor Gilly when I was able to cover all these events in the pep rally I ended up editing it all and that's what allowed me to work for the source That's what allowed me um, to get into some red carpets and start building and networking oh. Professor Gilly you're muted ah. <laughs> How about now? I thought I was opposite, but I guess not um, Of course, I'm the one that can't handle the technology right now so what's it like doing a red carpet event? What's it like with the whole, the event itself plus then what you have to do? Okay, so I think a lot of people think that red carpets are glitz and glam, but I'm gonna be honest, red carpets are probably my least favorite of my job. And the reason I say that is because it is a very cutthroat scene. And I would not suggest anyone who has not done 
like maybe shadow a red carpet first. I didn't shadow a red carpet. I shadowed a press junket before. So I'll just, um, I'll describe the difference between those, but a red carpet is very fast paced. So what I will say is you need to make sure you have your questions prepped. Also, you kind of have to be good at thinking of questions on the fly because something that irritates me the most and it happens very commonly is when you're on a red carpet and you ask a good question, the person behind you or in front of you will steal your question for the, for the next celebrity coming. And it bothers, it's a big thing, like all journalists actually get into fights on red carpets for that because you're stealing someone else's work, you're stealing their question. Um, so you have to kind of come up on the fly with another one. Also, you have to deal with publicists. Um, again, not to bring racial and throw the race card, but very often uh, black journalists don't get as much uh, coverage as a white journalist or the publicist won't really speak to us they'll go right to like a white journalist and let the artist or celebrity speak to them first so you also have to deal with really having to push for your outlet to get seen um but then there's also the good parts of the red carpet you know there are the fun moments you do get to um interview the celebrities you get to see what goes behind um a red carpet you get to see the production you know again not only do I have love for, for journalism, but I love seeing the pre-production of things. So seeing how all the PAs and everybody are talking on the headsets and lining everything up and seeing how something can be a live show. Cause I did um, Black Girls Rock Awards for BET and that was pre-recorded in Jersey. And then I've also done another one where it was um, live recorded. So I, you see the differences of them. Um, red carpets are, like I said, cutthroat. You really have to fight for your questions to be heard. Um, sometimes celebrities don't have time. They're, they're going for the biggest one. So they'll do E! News and BET and then skip you. Um, because again, right now I'm starting with smaller outlets. I think the biggest one I've worked with is Global Grind, if you've ever heard of them. Um, but other than that, I've been doing smaller ones like Nocturnal and um, Where is the Buzz and The Source and things like that. So if you're not with a bigger outlet, red carpets can be very cutthroat and stressful. Huh. Mm hmm So how, like, do they just assign these to you? Is that how it works or? So um, it just depends. So since I'm a freelancer, I'm really independent. So I usually have to keep my ear to the pavement, which is knowing when all the press junkets are, knowing when the red carpets are, um, having connections with agencies and publications. Um, but there are chance, there are times, like for example, when I did the Black Klansman red carpet, that was assigned to me. Someone within the studio of Universal reached out to me, which is like, hey, Dante, we came across your um, page. We would love for you to cover the red carpet. Are you available? And then you either say yes or no. They ask if you have um, your own camera, if you're bringing a videographer with you so that they can account for the press passes they have to give you. Um, but usually you have to send in for them. If not, then yes, someone is reaching out to you. And um, for all the press junkets so far, I've been reached out for. And for the red carpets, I've been reached out for four of them. And I, I've pitched myself for four of them. All right. Is it, um, like with the live interviews of celebrities, is it nerve wracking to interview them? Are you like, did you ever find yourself like messing up or like, yes. able to like flip it around and like kill it? Yeah, so um, my first, first red carpet was terrible, Professor Gilly, with Spike Lee, Black Klansman, guys. So I did it with Source Magazine, and they act, we had filmed all day at YouTube for a morning report. And I guess last minute, so that's another thing in this industry, everything is very on the fly. So now my new thing is if I'm going into New York, which can be annoying, I'll bring an extra change of clothes just in case I have to get glammed up for something. Um, because it happens very often while I'll be in New York doing something and last minute I'll get a call like, hey Dante, are you available to cover a red carpet? And then I don't have anything to wear. So that has happened to me. And when I did that for Spike Lee, I, it was my first red carpet. I wasn't mentally prepared. I didn't have an outfit. I was choking. And he even made a joke that I have on my first, first reel where he's like, oh, they just threw you into the pool with the sharks, huh? And I said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not drowning. I'm, I'm floating. And he's like, oh, I like that. You're floating. You're floating. But I was rambling. Couldn't get my questions out for the life of me. Um, I was not prepared. I had no questions prepared whatsoever. Oh, and I didn't see the movie. I had watched the movie the day after because again, I was not prepared. So 
that has definitely been my first one. And I always am proud to say that. I mean, of course, the first one I messed up on was Spike, but I like that he made a joke of it with me. Now when I see him, you know, we have a little connection and um, we're not perfect. I think that I'm actually glad that, that was my first mess up because you learn from it. And I can actually watch that on my reel and be like, what did I mess up on and how can I perfect it? Hmm. So there's definitely people right now in this chat, even though their cameras aren't on, that I know specifically want to be on camera. Mm -hmm. um, don't make me call you all out. So um, guys. with that in particular, how does somebody that wants to do it, do you think, get a start in doing it? Um, okay, so my start actually was one day I actually... <laughs> I skipped Professor Gilly's class and I went on an audition for Source Magazine. But I will Gilly, say, I would have loved to know that. I did. I, I, I did. I remember that because I came back and told Damien the, like the next time he had class and I'm like, I skipped class. I went on an audition in New York. My start for you guys will be pay attention to the small outlets on, um, on Instagram. So there's small outlets like the Nocturnal. There is um, Black Girls in Media. There is... I'm trying to think of smaller ones. Um, I think it's called Black Nerd something. There are so many small outlets, and I can give Professor Gilly a list, where they're looking for people, whether it be writers, interns. You have to start somewhere. So um, I know that a lot of people, they're not going to want to hear this, but it is a hard journey, guys. And you are going to have to do some free work, unfortunately. And you will have to start small before you get big. And what I will say is lock in an internship before you leave. If you can lock in an internship, that'll give you a better chance of actually getting in because the biggest thing in this industry is who you know. You have to rub elbows. You have to show your work ethic. And that is really going to help you get to where you want to be. So my start was the source and my start was um, being an assistant to Zilla Valentine. I don't know if you guys know of him, but he is a pretty well-known film journalist. And when I was at CBS, I had interned and I was obsessed with him. I had emailed him. I shot my sh shoot your shot basically too. And I emailed him telling how much I looked up to him how I would love to offer any um, help if he need anything because he had his own brand of Zilla movie party. So in the city, he would have pre-screenings for all the hottest movies. I, I pick theater with snacks, celebrities, big influencers would all go there. So I'm like, how can I get into that? I offered my services and I became his assistant. I worked for him. I worked free for him for about three months. And then after that, he started paying me. But I was at every press junket for free early in the morning, filming him, watching, writing down skills of how he interviewed people. I was, I was doing everything I had to do. So basically what I'm going to say is in this industry, you have to hustle. You have to make connections um again look for the small media outlets on instagram pitch yourself start making a reel i'm gonna have probably say that the entire time we're on here because making a reel showing your work is what they're looking for they want to see what is it that you do what is your creative um mindset what do you have already um pre-produced i was able like i said to show those type of things to people which has allowed me to get into some auditions and allowed me to cover some red carpets so I would just say you have to intern. You're going to have to do some free work, pitch yourself, shoot your shot to people that you look up to that you feel like maybe you could um, assist them. Because again, assistance, if you look at anybody from Kim Kardashian to Kanye West, all these people, they all somewhat started as assistants before they got to where they want to be. So don't be afraid to be doing the groundwork first. Hmm. Interesting. And also, I think it depends on if you want to do entertainment news as opposed to national news. It's a totally different field. Um, national news, which is like, you, you know, reporters on TV, most likely you're going to have to go back to school. You might have to go and get your master's or your doctorate for more pay. You may want to even get down to meteorology and make yourself more marketable. You might. It's so different. Um, than entertainment news. Entertainment news, you may not need to go back to school after you graduate with your bachelor's. It's all about who you know. Are you making your own platform and podcasts? 
um, and national news, you might have to actually move to a different state. I mean, that's in any, both sides, but it's very more common that with national news, you're going to probably move to Wisconsin before you book something in LA and New York. And with entertainment news, most likely you'll, I mean, you could play around, you can still go to Atlanta, Miami, um, Los Angeles, which are still places I'm considering, but it's not like it's Wisconsin or Arkansas or something like that first. So, um, and for me, don't get me wrong, eventually I might break out into national news. I really enjoy that type of stuff, but I, if I could, I would like to just own entertainment news first. How much research do you have to do with entertainment news? Like, do you have to be on the ball? You have to know everything. How do you, I guess, research this? So unfortunately, some people don't take it as serious. I think they like, again, it's like glitz and glam, but I take it very serious. So like when I go to a press junket, I have a book that I bring with me. And as I'm writing, as I'm watching the movie, I'm not even looking down my hand, my writing looks like chickens, whatever scratch, but I'm writing down things as I'm watching um, the movie, whether it be symbolism, whether it be like what I may think the director is trying to uh, carry across in a film, what an actor's facial expression might be or a quote that I feel like carries along in the film. Um, I do a lot of research. I do research on the production company. I do research on the director. I do research on the actors. And if any films are somewhat the same and characters are somewhat the same, um, I, especially if it's a, a, a sequel or a prequel, things like that. And also when you do press junkets and red carpets, they give you a whole press packet, which kind of is like a cheat sheet. And it'll give you a, a big full description of what the, da what the uh, character was thinking while acting, uh, how they wanted the character be to, to be portrayed and, and vice versa and so on. And those things also help you with your research because you, know, you might have a question like, why did Jake Gyllenhaal say, this this and this and then somehow you look in the packet it actually might be there so use those things as your research but a lot of research still goes into entertainment news because you don't want to look silly you want to look as if you know the show and the character and honestly celebrities like it more when they know that you're really into it so when i had interviewed tay diggs i had spoken about um his daughter being uh biracial and he came out with a book about mixed children. I also am biracial, I'm black and Salvadorian. So I loved that book and it's a child's book. And I had mentioned it on a, something on our red carpet that had nothing to do with that. And he was just in awe. And from there, the conversation was flowing. He was so open every time he saw me at the party, he kept pulling me over to get footage of him. So I think that when you really do your research on a person and you see what they're doing even outside of a movie, outside of a commercial, whatever you're there for, and see that there are a person outside that celebrity, they really, really love it. And it gets the, um, you get better content and footage. I love him, by the way. Me too. I love Tay Diggs. So I was like, oh yeah, I gotta do my work. <laughs> what oh. year was that, that interview with Tay Diggs? Do you remember? Um, you said, when was that? Yeah, when was that? Was that recently? That was last year in February. So we did it for Open Pantry in New York City. It was a foundation that uh, for donating uh, for food. So it was uh, for, Dominic for Dominican Republic, actually. And um, we just did it in New York City. So that was last year in February. I interviewed him. See, she's on the ball. She knows. What <laughs> she's got it. So what would you say the difference is doing, like, um, the on-screen interviewing and whatnot versus acting? Mm-hmm. Um, so the on-screen interviewing, I would say, again, it's just you. Like, it's just you as a person in front of a celebrity. So in that part, you're like, oh, okay, this is a real human being that I'm speaking to. I think that's the difference as opposed to acting. When you're acting, you're just a totally different person. You're no longer... I'm not me, is that what you mean? Like when I did my short film, I guess like in that way. Um, and also if you put in the other way, a celebrity wise, um, I guess interviewing them like, okay, so for example, when I interviewed Tyrese for Black and Blue, getting to see him in the press junket as opposed to what you see on social media when people make fun of him and things like that, totally different. And it's almost like, wow, these people are really human. And here I am, they're on social media, people are making memes of them and things like that. So I think it, it, it allows me to really see also that these celebrities are human. It is different, it's a much different thing. But then you also have people where like, 
I, I interviewed the cast of Power and um, Omar, the guy who plays Ghost, he's very much a celebrity. He didn't really speak too much. Um, very short and, and, and quaint. I wouldn't say rude, but very just matter of fact. And so I think that you also, you can see who's the celebrity celebrity and like who's in it. And then someone who's a celebrity and still wants to be a, a person, like still wants to be human and be treated that way. Have you ever interviewed anyone who was a celebrity that it was just like, like pulling teeth to get them to talk to you or have like a good conversation? Or will they Honestly, yes. When I did the long shot movie with Seth and Charlize Theron, <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but they were high on the carpet. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. <laughs> literally each journalist from E! News all the way down to like Entertainment Weekly, everybody was just shocked at the responses we were all getting. It was very quick and jokey. Like they did not even want to be on the carpet. When you asked them a question, it was just like a really lame answer. And um, yeah, and then I think all of us like on the carpet were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they smoked or they might be drunk right now before the screening. And it was probably my least favorite carpet. It was really hard to get responses from them. And like I said, I think they were just on another level. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have any questions before I monopolize with a couple more? I do. I have a question. Oh, go for yeah, it. ask away, anybody. Oh, did did you want to go first? I heard someone else ask whoever it was. Oh, you can go. You can go. Oh. Uh, I was wondering, so you say making a reel is very important and like getting out there and getting your name out there. I was always a person who was like kind of stage shy and like didn't really want to be on camera. But as I get older, I find myself getting more comfortable and coming into my own. So should I make a real showcasing like my behind the scenes work and on camera work if I have any? Yes. Um, so like I was saying earlier, um, I had started to apply for behind the camera jobs as well, just because again, it's not always open for in front of the camera and I still gotta make money. So I was applying to behind the camera and I was using Professor Oaks, some of my f editing things that he's given me A's on and it was actually getting me uh, callbacks. So I would say yes. And as well as your real, I know right now quarantine is going on, but you guys can use the teleprompter app, write your own script and like produce your own little show with your phone, make your own little reports. If they're clean and edited well, I don't see a reason why you can't use them for your reel. Because honestly, you, you wanna show the people when you're doing internships, what your skill sets are and mm -hmm. where they can place you. Thank you. What if you feel like the reel that you've made doesn't have good enough quality content in it? Like you are your worst critic, mm -hmm. but what if you're like, I just don't think that I'm good enough. What would you say? That's me. So let me tell you guys, um, I am my biggest critic. I, everything that I do now, you cannot tell me, like, I, I still am amazed by the feedback that I get because I am my biggest critic and I don't think that I'm anywhere where I want to be. So what I will say is, I mean, when I had my reel, my reel was me at the pep rally. It was me interviewing the president of Kane. It was me selling I me mean, at the Starbucks in the library. Grainy iPhone material. I did not care. I pieced it together and Dante Ramos had a reel because too often we um, sit and, and make ourselves stagnant because we want it to be perfect. You can make it perfect as you continue to work. Um, and that's exactly what I did. As I continue to do things with the source, I started to add on to my cane reel. And before I knew it, all my cane footage was off of it and it was just all source things. So just keep doing it. And if you think it's not the best, so what? Like, I mean, like I said, the point is they know that you're a student. They know that you're not coming out of E! News. They shouldn't expect anything clean. I mean, at this point, it's just you trying to show your work and get yourself in the door. Okay. Uh, I had a question. Yeah, hi. Um, I, don't, I just want to say the world is so small. I was in the cotillion with your sister, Damari. Ah, yeah. hey. So thank you for coming on today. And I'm definitely one of those students that Gilly wanted to call out, but she didn't <laughs> but I am 
uh, I'm interested in like so many things that I know that I like to sing, dance, act, but I come from a family of entrepreneurs and it's like what I want, I'm going to get it, but I don't know the steps to take yeah. it to that point. And sometimes it's frustrating because you know that you can do it, but you just don't know where to start. And I don't mind being, I want to be behind camera, but what I really want to do is be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And I've taken, um, taken different like camera uh, classes and production classes here at Keene uh, this past year, but everything was stopped during the, during the quarantine. Yeah. And now I'm just thinking about how I can like progress myself now that I'm in the house. Um, I have, I've been connected with, um, with some people on campus, but I don't know, yet, like, the steps to take to, you're talking about a reel? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think I know what you're, um, meaning by that, okay. and, um, do you have, like, any advice, any, um, um, possible internship, uh, possibilities, just anything that could help? Okay, so, First of all, hi, girl, and thank hi. you for even tuning in. I, all of you guys, I know it's a perfect class, so you have to, but thank you for even asking a question. So, mm -hmm. one, I posted on my Instagram two videos about how to land an internship, networking, all that stuff on my Instagram okay. um, that I did with Black Girls in Media. Two, so I think you should watch those because it'll answer a lot of your questions. And number two, Black Girls in Media, if you go to their Instagram, it is $60, but you should join their membership. Their membership, this is for anybody. It doesn't matter if you're black or not. You should just join in because they give you, um, it's a group chat and they will give you opportunities to, you know, internships, networking, events, things like that. Mm -hmm. You, I totally understand about you don't know where to start because that mm -hmm. was me and that's how it always is. We don't know where to start, but just taking the first step is what matters. Mm -hmm. Um, and it sucks because quarantine stopped us because I was going to say networking events really help. But what you should do right now is while we're in quarantine, look on social media at Black Girls and Media. Um, mm -hmm. Look at other places that have group chats, that have um, networking events. If there's lives, I have been seeing so many brands have lives for girls in media and you can go there and network. So then you also said a reel. You don't know what a reel is. So that's the number one thing you should know wanting to be a journalist or on camera. A reel, R-E-E-L. And that is going to showcase all of your work that you've done this year. And that is how you're going to book auditions. That is what you show people what you do. And it's basically your resume on camera. Okay. Um, and it's very important to have so you should start trying to build that as much as you can you're also saying that you don't you don't know what you can do so something like i told justin is you can download the teleprompter app and if there's stories that you're interested in why don't you make your own reports and start adding them to your social media or your youtube now is the time if you want to be an on-air reporter where people are going to start seeing your creativity because our industry is always up in the air mm -hmm. so right now is your name Tamia? Yeah, Tamia. Tamia, this is really going to showcase and challenge your creativity. It's going to challenge um, your journalism um, skills. What stories are interested? Do you know your audience? And this will also push you to have to start, you know, creating things. Mm -hmm. And maybe this will help you um, start forming your reel while you're here. So um, what, what I will say is if you can message me on Instagram, I can try to exchange you with some things. Okay. Um, but the first star is always just reaching out to people, networking people alike like you who can teach things and joining into groups. It's so important to join into Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, things like that. Um, they, they're out there, guys, for media, mm -hmm. for production all the time. I'm even in a few of them, and they will help you get um, some opportunities as well. Oh, I don't even take up so much time. No. How do... I think for me, I'm in, I'm in Union County, so how is that every day getting, because I'm sure you worked in New York, right? Yeah. How is that every day getting from um, this area to New York every day? Like, was it stressful? Was it times that you were like, okay, I just don't want to go? Yeah. 
all the time. So I, uh, me, I live in central Jersey. So I'm in Somerset right down the block from Rutgers, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. Um, so with time travel, you got to think of everything. And I like to take the bus. I'm not a fan of the train of the NJ transit because it stops too, too frequently. Yeah. Um, I know the bus, you might be like, but what about traffic? I get it, but it's very, if they take less stops and I tend to get to the city faster, but that's two hours of commute. So I'm basically two that hours there and two hours back. Which means, so there's been plenty of times when I needed to be in New York to be filming by nine o'clock. I'm up at five o'clock in the morning doing hair and makeup, um, eating breakfast, writing down my questions, getting over, going over everything just to be in the city at the place by nine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's been plenty of times where I've even cried going into an event because I'm tired, um, mm -hmm. because I'm stressed, or because, you know, it, life is life. So sometimes you may have your whole day planned out, but there's going to be curveballs thrown at you. So mm -hmm. I have to deal with all that. Plus worrying about if I'm going to make my two hour commute on top of catching a subway train or an Uber, it is very tiring. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm the type of person where like, and I don't mean to sound like, Oh, I'm so motivational, but like, if you want it bad enough, you're just going to do it. Mm -hmm. So crying and tired and all, mm -hmm. I just push through with the travel, but my goal is to eventually financially be okay where I can start living either closer to the city. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, so I don't mind moving back to New York, but I do love my suburbs. So if I could, I would like to stay closer to the city to commute back and forth. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, just seeing, um, just having to be able to talk with people, it gets your mind going um, and it gives you a chance to express the, the interest that you have. And my mom always said like, you're supposed to like network with people, um, use your connections because your connections, if you are hardworking and they see that you wanna do what you say you're gonna do, then they're going to look out for you. Exactly. And um, a lot of times, like I've done different plays I'm a theater major, and sometimes I feel like, okay, I'm taking on everything, but I just want to see things produced from the fruit of my labor. Well, to me, and I get that, because for me, I sing, I act, mm -hmm. I do journalism, um, mm -hmm. so I, and I do social media influencing, because I feel like I am multifaceted, and I think that makes you more marketable. And we talk about that, too, by the way. Yeah. All of the different, like, she is like the brand girl for so many Yeah, people. exactly. But she rocks it, though. It's not like she's, you know, oh, try this, whatever. Like, she goes all in. Yeah, yeah you, you definitely just have to. Because my thing, too, is that it's funny that you brought that up because right now with me doing social media influ influencing, I'm trying to tie in everything, my singing, my journalism, all that stuff. Yeah. So what I will say is focus on those things. Mm -hmm. See how you tie it into your brand. But if journalism is what you want, I would say start your journalism, you know, and then as you start to build your audience, then start showing, tasting them different faces of yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Or vice versa, do your singing or your dancing first and then start showing them different show, um, faces of yourself. But mm -hmm. you definitely want to start with one and then once you gain your momentum in your audience, then start bringing them into things that, um, that you have. Because I get you, girl, I'm the same way. And you don't want to lose track of, of your main goal. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm going to tell all of you guys is a mentor is very, very important. Um, yeah, I should have said that when asking, how do you get your start? Mm -hmm. I, again, had the source, but even at the source, um, there came a moment where I'm like, okay, well, it's been a year. I want more. And I don't know if I'm going to climb any more here. What else can I do? That's when I reached out to Zilla when I was also at CBS. And um, just perfect timing where he asked me to be his assistant and I became his mentee and he became my mentor. And because of him, a lot of opportunities I was able to get. Um, so I will say that I do think that having a mentor within the field that you are interested in is very, very, very important. Being genuine and offering your skills and um, being, a, like, like I said, offering your skills, being a true friend, clapping for them when they're winning and really absorbing everything that you're learning from them. Mm -hmm. um, and I promise you, if you do that, your mentor will open so many doors for you without even asking, because that's exactly what happened to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think out of everyone, like being that I'm going into my senior year, I'm kind of like nervous because you don't know when we're going back on campus. And it's just bothering me because, I mean, the most, the most person that I communicate with is Gilly. Like, I talk to her <laughs> all the time, and but I don't know any, and I talk to my theater advisor too, 
but did, was there any like people at Kane or any departments or steps that you took while you're in school that you're that um helped you to this day? Yeah, Professor Gilly. <laughs> Kane TV really uh and I say it all the time and I don't say it just to, you know, boost anything, but mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, my Kane TV class, we were lit. We really like kicked the ball <laughs> starting for everybody to start joining on and taking this serious because I was like, Gilly, we're going to make this Kane TV real. <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, not to lie, Kane TV, I built my entire real and future in that class. We didn't even have working microphones. I want to no, we had fake fake microphones. I was basically speaking so loud over the wind so you could hear me, okay? I had to be whispering to everybody who was into it, speak really loud because there's no microphone. So I get it. Um, but definitely that. Um, Professor Falkowski, um, I took his classes very serious when we did the uh, TV class. So you had to like produce your own show. Mm -hmm. And my show I did with a few of my friends, Damien and Cisco, and we produced our own. And it was basically an entertainment talk show. And I interviewed um, musicians on campus. I interviewed uh, people who like to cook, whatever was something just to talk about it. And I used that as a part of my reel as well. Um, and I had friends who were great at editing. I basically still use Kane till this day. Like um, Mary, she still goes to Kane. She, uh, did my reel for me. She edited my reel because I hate editing. Yeah. Sorry, guys. That's just me. I hate it. I will pay somebody any day. And um, she did mine. And then I also used Kevin <laughs> when I was doing Black Girls Rock Awards. I still used him as my cameraman. I would say, honestly, what, like I said, Kane TV really, really helped me. And I wish there was more that I could say. You just have to really dive in. And I feel bad because at this time, it's hard because we're all at a standstill. Yeah. So all you can really do is, like I was saying, make your own reports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, start a podcast. Give something for people to be like, what is Tamiya doing right now? Mm -hmm. Well, all right. So here's a question then. Let's say you have like a podcast on YouTube or just like vlogs every day or whatever, right? Yeah. Do you think that these outlets that will hire you even freelance will be like, oh, they're just, you know, a social media YouTuber I don't think that they would be good person to person contact. Um, honestly, <laughs> no, because sadly, and it's frustrating, which is why I'm trying to do social media influencing, social media influencers are taking journalists' jobs. Like, why is Liz, she's really funny, I don't know if you guys know her, skinny with the little, with the pointy nose, but last year she did Met Gala for Vogue. She did coverage for Met Gala for Anna Winter, and my jaw dropped. Because I'm like, do you know how many years I would have to work to just do that as a journalist to get to, to be on Vogue to cover Met Gala? You know what I mean? So, no, I think that if you can be a sociable person, if you have an audience and it's growing, use that. Well, well, look at that, guys. I actually have a question. Yes. So for the real, uh, so like I have like a mini YouTube channel, so I just post like different videos that I created from King TV along with um, like different stuff that I did in Professor Oaks' class. No. So for the real, would I just edit all of that together or should I just, or would it be better to just send in the link of like my YouTube channel or should yeah. I- So uh, you would like, do it, make put it all together. Little portfolio in that way. Yeah. You would put it all together, okay. all of your clips. Um, and then, like, um, I could give Professor Gilly a link to my YouTube so you guys can watch my reel and exactly how it should be. Um, with your reel, it should have your contact information. It should, it should have clips of, like, your best work. So, for example, on mine, um, when I interviewed the cast of um, Britney Runs a Marathon, there was a scene where they were like, oh, my God, you ask great questions. I put that in my reel. Because you want to showcase these media outlets, like, oh, yeah, this is what I do. These are what these celebrities I are I liked doing. that movie. It was so good, right? I cried. I watched it two times. I thing. want to run a marathon, by the way. You guys have heard it first. But, you know, maybe in the next 10 years when I finally get to it, but it'll happen and you're all invited. Yes, I'll be there cheering for you at the end. But definitely um, put your reel together and you can also send a link. Like there's been times where for some reason via email, 
when I tried to like upload my reel, it wouldn't send, like it wouldn't um, send via email. So I would just be like, yeah. you know, uh, below is my link to my reel directly to it. And that's really about it. But yes, like a reel is like the number one thing I can say for you guys and a mentor. Like if I can push that any harder, those are the two things right there, a mentor and a reel showcasing your work. And how long would the reel be? Like just a general? Yeah, um, a reel really shouldn't be over like, I would say maybe the longest three minutes. Ooh. Okay. And the shortest, the short i mean honestly yeah you shouldn't really go over like two minutes okay and you should always make sure that it's like entertaining because again some people um like i've had a director reach out to me this is my first first reel and she told me it was boring because it was all my cane stuff you know what i mean but it was for an internship she still took me this is when i did hot zone so i didn't get paid for it it was just a writing one but you want to make sure that it is very captivating like within the first 30 seconds, hopefully something that's like, whoa, okay. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Do you feel like, have you felt or um, experienced a time where you um, were discrimi discrim sorry, discriminated against? <laughs> discriminated against for the demographics you possess? Yeah. Um, so like i was saying earlier on the red carpets you do sometimes have publicists straight up skip you and they'll go right to a white journalist um there will also be cases where you'll be at a press junket and they have a list of who goes in order and they mm -hmm. might just take the white journalist over you regardless if that's your scheduled time and that's just the way it works um I will say, fortunately, more black, more black owned media outlets are coming, are forming, um, which is what I've been working with. Like when I've worked with Global Grind, when I've worked with Where is the Buzz, when I've worked with The Source, fortunately, they have all been a black owned business for myself where I felt comfortable, but that doesn't change when you're out in the real world and you're in the carpet, not with your team, what you face. So yeah, definitely. And I think um, one of the biggest ones recently that even came out, a friend of mine, Emerald, she was at the John Black interview and Halle Berry's publicist straight up completely ignored every single black journalist. And Halle Berry was the one who spoke out against it and was like, no, like, what are you doing? And she went up to my friend Emerald and gave her some time and that was all over the news. But that is definitely something that you will face when coming into this, into this industry. Okay. I have a question. Andrea has a question. Yeah. Oh, what's hi, Abby. Hold on. Andrea, she's so tiny and quiet. So hang on. Hey. Hi. So my question is, um, any like advice for specifically graduating seniors? and like how to go about getting the job that you want and like standing out and like yeah for it. yeah 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 um the application process is probably the most annoying and unfortunately do you know what like what type of position you're going for or looking for um just not specifically just anything to you anything okay to yeah have. um linkedin is really great I know if you have a LinkedIn, I have found so many opportunities and so many people um, post um, like applications and things on there. LinkedIn is massive. Also, I, I, social media, I know that's our generation, but social media, you'd be surprised. Like the places that I had mentioned before, um, they will post things that like, oh, Spotify is hiring, YouTube is hiring, Google is hiring. Um, those type of places you can look for. The application process, I'm not going to lie to you within the, the media industry, whether you want to do production, a writer, or whatever, it can be a little deterring. You're going to be like, damn, why? But... What I will say is just keep doing it. Apply to 50 a day if you, if you have to. And again, I always say this too. I think that us as our mindset, like, oh, we went to college, we're supposed to have our dream job as soon as we graduate. No, most likely that first job you're getting out of college, you're not probably even gonna like, and you're, you're probably gonna wanna quit within like the first year. Um, but what I will say is stick with it, learn from there, network, rub elbows as much as you can. Look on Indeed, look on LinkedIn. Um, if you guys have Slack, the app Slack, there are a bunch of group chats like uh, 
mind connect I, it's called hashtag mim connect and i believe that's for like minorities in media connect and um it's for spanish black anybody and you they drop um applications in there for writers producer producers vas ap's all those things just stay diligent on the search on the, um that's the best thing i can say um and also what I used to do too and still do is on Google, I literally look up media openings or journalism openings, um, anything, public relations openings. And from there, just look and also go based off of your salary. If you know what you want salary wise, don't, don't settle. Cause nowadays these times are hard. So get every penny that you can. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh -huh. Was it Abby? Oh, that was Valerie that I cut off before. I'm so sorry. No. Hi, Valerie. Hey, I just have a question. Have you ever worked with a Hispanic TV network? Because so I actually just goodness. recently aud auditioned for Telemundo for Quibi. I didn't get it, unfortunately, but um, I actually worked with them. And then when I did um, Common Pantry, that was for a Dominican brand. And I'm hopefully going to be working with Remezcla soon. And what I will say, though, is if you speak Spanish, you, pro you have a better chance of getting, of getting a job. Um, I, unfortunately, I need to beat my father. He did not raise me to speak Spanish. And everyone in my family it, speaks Spanish, you know? Um, so that's something that I'm trying to learn right now because I want to branch myself out into that um but yeah when I auditioned for Quibi with with El Mundo it was amazing I worked with um Francisco and he basically hires every telenovela actor as well down to every Telemundo reporter and it was an amazing experience he gave me such great feedback it was awesome to be in the studio and see what goes into it um yeah and I, I will say that is a great field to be in if you can do hispanic television go for it girl yeah with me it's opposite because spanish is my first language mm -hmm. and that's what i really want to do because when i speak english i feel like shy and i don't want to do it but uh -huh. spanish is like definitely so different yeah. and it's like what i want to do um if that's the case then you should look for you should look out for like uh Ramez, you should look for um, Telemundo, Univision, all of those places. See, um, I think it's called like, isn't it like Billboard Latino too or something like that? Look for any of those places. I'm telling you, they have internships out the wazoo. Um, try to get an intern in there, email them. Um, and another thing you guys can do too, you can download casting networks like casting network or actors access and occasionally they will also have auditions for hispanic um reporters thank you you're welcome he has a question hey hi how are you good how are you i'm good so i had a question um so you mentioned you were freelance and during this quarantine i have been speaking to gilly a lot about things i want to do and i started with this idea that I really want to support local businesses. I have a lot of friends that own like successful New Jersey businesses. So it's just something to start a YouTube channel with um, to have content. And I want to start, you know, interviewing these owners of these small local New Jersey businesses and see how, it, how their businesses grew. So me being that I don't really, I'm not, I don't have an agency. I'm not from a big station or network. How do I convince them? How do I brand myself to want, make them want to interview, interview with me? Um, honestly, I think that a small business right now, anyone would take some, take anybody interested in it. You know what I mean? I think they'd almost be silly to turn down you get Abigail because what small business would not want someone to be like during this quarantine, quarantine, how are you affected? Um, how can we help you? What would you want your customers to know? So I think that if you pitch yourself like, Hey, my name is Abigail and I am, I'm a New Jersey resident and I want to you know, interview your, your business or your brand and just see how this quarantine affected you. Was it negative or was it a, a great impact? What would you want customers and New Jersey residents to know? How can we help you? If you go in that way, I think any brand or, or store owner is going to be like, yeah, I need to, to do this because it's helping them. It's helping people be interested in them. Um, and on your page, you know what I mean? You just 
make little flyers on Canva about your episodes that you want to do. Um, if you want to do a podcast, download the Anchor app. So that way you can just, it's simple and it's easy for you. Um, if you want, do an IG live. That could be the quickest thing for you. They could pull up their phone. You pull up their phone, write down a schedule time. Hey, everybody, make a flyer. I'm Abigail and I'm checking out, you know, New Jersey brands during this quarantine. I'll be posting tomorrow at three o'clock IG live. Tune in. And it doesn't matter if you get two to 10 people, if you get one person watching, I promise you it's gonna just keep going and you have to be consistent. I think too often we all get deterred because we get one view, one like. Mm -hmm. The consistency is what matters. And do you, when you sit down with them, or when you're sitting in an interview setting, because I know you talked about red carpet and other events, do you send them the questions beforehand or you just ask them then? That, that um, I do, uh, just because I'm working I prefer to, some people even ask for it. Um, I think there's only been one occasion where I'm like, oh, I, I haven't sent the questions. But every single time I've interviewed, yes, I've sent over the questions uh, ahead of time. If it's something that they don't wanna answer, they may not feel comfortable with, just so for them mm -hmm. to have a, a choice. And so they can see about how long roughly the, the um, interview will go for. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. And just start, Abigail, don't be in your head, just do it. <laughs> you. Once you start the first episode, you're going to be like, oh, well, that wasn't bad. And you're going to want to feel like Gilly's been talking to you about it. <laughs> yeah, just keep doing it. Just do it. Oh, just and a little side note. I see Todd's hand up, so we're going to hit Todd next. Hey, but Todd. I want to tell you that Kane TV's first ever IG Live came from that girl right there. <laughs> hello, hello. Where's Todd? I'm looking for a Todd. Right here. Hey. Oh. Um, so I'm in a little bit of a different boat that you are. I've actually been trying to work my way up to become a producer okay. in the media industry. And unlike many of the other people here, including you, I have struggled to find internships. Mm -hmm. So I've mainly been relying on working for Teen TV, just making my own show, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually very similar to a YouTube uh, mm -hmm. company, which I don't know if you ever heard of, called uh, Fine Brothers Entertainment. Um, I've actually uh, made videos very similar to that account, uh, uh, students reacting to certain things. And I've tried to use that to help apply for internships, but I've not been um, successful so far, and I'm losing hope on that. Um, no, I want to ask that um, I know there's still a lot. He froze. Oh, he froze. Before going up to okay. the producer ranks, so so I want to know like, is it a problem if you don't have an internship, and if uh, if you don't, is there still uh, opportunities out there after college to be able to work your way up to start out as a PA and work your way up into the uh, producer levels for whoever you want to work for? Okay, so my thing is because everything is up in the air within our within our industry. I really feel like across the board, a lot of businesses are going to just be hiring us because we were all in the same boat. You know what I mean? They can't really hold that against us that the world was put on pause and we weren't able to get internships or jobs or experience. You know what I mean? So it is good that you are creating your own things, which is what I was telling Tamia and Abigail. You're already a step ahead because you have content that's your own. Um, it's showing your, your production skills. It's showing your pre-production um planning skills and showing your creativity all of that things so continue to do that and i kind of am sad to hear that production doesn't have a lot of internships because when i was looking that's all i was open and i was like well sheesh um what company well, I, think, I think mainly a lot to have to do with the fact that we have this pandemic like many of the media companies are just like because it's becoming too risky to probably just like exactly down, yeah. internships and down and i don't know if there's even going to be any in the fall right now because uh, Same. That's supposed, Everything's to last, the air. that's supposed to be my last semester. So yeah. Uh, so what I will say too is, when all of this is all said and done, you should even um. Because I would say, do you have it for you being a producer? One thing I will say is, one of my friends who does production for Sister Circle in Atlanta, he had started out just doing um like media as well but also then started branching out into producing clips of like sports and then producing stuff for like a talk show if you can try to produce different things um whether it be sports 
you know, things, whether you edit your own videos, just so you can be versatile. And, um, and again, I do think that it's because it just sucks. Everything is on hold right now. I will keep an eye out for you for um, internships. Because again, like I will say, if you look on LinkedIn, if you looked on um, Indeed, if yeah, you That's where I try to apply for some of Like some of them, the internships I work for, I applied there. But the other internships I've mainly applied for, like I mainly just applied on their website. Like for example, um, CBS or NBC, Disney, yeah, yeah. Uh, Turner Broadcasting, Fox News, you know, those companies like that. I Have you tried any sports network. outlets? What's that? Have you tried any sports outlets? Um, I tried to, like, with Fox Sports, and I've heard nothing back from them. You should, um, I know that there's still, there's, like, MSG, there's the Barclays Center, because they have commercials that need to be produced. I, I will say, though, I do see more produ producers needed more in the sports field than I do in the entertainment field when I was looking. And obviously, I don't really like sports like that. So I just stayed away from that. Um, again, I'm going to send Professor Le Gilly some links that can help you guys um, when it comes down to looking for things. Um, and hopefully, it helps as well as tips. So I'll give her that. And then hopefully, Todd, that can help you. Because that does suck that like right now, everything is on fall. So everything's up in the air. But I'm really hoping um, that once all of this is, is, is put back again, all of us can find jobs. Because I'm also on the same boat. I've been applying, but it's kind of been on hold right now. OK, thank you. You're welcome. I would like to point out that um, we have a visitor from yesterday here in the video. What's up, Eric? Eric's back. Everybody say hi. Hey, What's going on, guys? How are you? Good morning. Woo! Uh, so, can uh, do we have any more questions for Dante? Because I want to do a group photo because I'm cheesy. <laughs> I don't have a question, but I would just like to say, Dante, you are killing it right now. You're you're totally you. inspiring. And for us creatives, you know, you, you're definitely, you know, keeping us on our toes. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep being amazing. And keep being a beacon of life. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate it. Aww. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. No problem. Aww. I love the love. I know. He's such a good support. <laughs> That's another thing you get from Kane. You make friends, guys. What? Mm -hmm. I, my team, Cisco, Damien, I am still ridiculously in contact with them. And also, you know who would be a good person who could probably give you some links? Um, Cisco, because he is a producer for uh, ESPN. I mean, he just started, but he's been doing that too. And um, he does the night shift. He had to move to Connecticut, but guys, it is all about you have to make sacrifices and changes. Where is it, Stanford? And yeah, he is. But nice he, there. Yeah, he's only doing it for a year. He is considering because he has some other things like with MSG and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that's where he had interns. But my thing is, again, guys, make friends in your classes genuine friendships you don't know where it can lead you to all of my friends that i made at kane tv i'm still cool with my girl zuleika you guys are gonna meet her tomorrow yeah. one of my best friends and we started at kane tv together and she's miss el salvador Ow, salvadorian <laughs> so it's like you really make friends carry it on with you you guys work together build each other up um and again, like Kane TV was everything for me. I would not be where I am without you, Professor Gilly. So thank you so much I'll for try. that. Thank you so much. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for pushing me and, and dealing with my craziness. Um, and thank you guys for even listening to me. I'm gonna send again, Miss uh, Professor Gilly, some links, hopefully things that can help you guys. And um, don't beat yourself up too much because even with me doing this for two years, there's still days where I'm like, Dante, why the hell did you choose this career? It's hard. It's not easy. And if I was going to sugarcoat for you, I wouldn't be, I'd be doing a disservice for you guys. So if this is really what you want to do, whether it be production, whether it be news producing, what, um, I mean, reporting, anything you want to do, a writer, just stick to it. It's not going to be easy. Um, and if you love it, you'll enjoy the process. Oh, well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Turn those cameras on so I can take a photo. Let's go. <laughs> Turn those cameras on. Please. <laughs> One, two. This is how the grandma's head.
Jada, where are you? I know you're there. I'm right here. <laughs> Get that camera on. It's you, Eric. I look crazy. That's all right. You're our favorite kind of crazy. <laughs> hey, guys. Nicole, Gabrielle, anybody? Cameras, photos. We even got Eric in it. Come on. <laughs> Jonathan, let's get you on there, too. I didn't want to go on, but... Oh, thank you, dear. Beautiful. There you go. All right. All right. Thank you, thank you. On thank the you. count of three, everyone smile. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> got All right. it. You guys have an amazing day. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Anytime. I'm going to contact you on Instagram. Inferno on Instagram. Keep yes. in contact and I will be happy to help you guys. And again, Gilly, I'll send you everything. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.